Question 5 says, the diagram shows a sector AOB of a circle centered at 0 and radius r centimeters. We're told to show that r satisfies the equation 2r squared minus 15r plus 18 equals 0, given that the area is 9cm squared and the perimeter is 15cm. Now, we need to, in this case, look for the formula for area of a sector and the length of an arc. But again, this is something that you may want to always remember. I mean, it can be proved, but you can as well just remember. So, one would simply say is this. Area is theta r squared with a half in front of it of a sector. Perimeter, um, length of an arc, rather, is just theta r. Now, how do we come about formulas like this? Ideally, in a circle, the area is pi r squared. But, when you take a fraction of a circle, then the area becomes the fraction of the actual circle. So, in this case, the fraction is defined by theta over 2 pi. So, theta over 2 pi is the fraction of the circle. Also, for the perimeter, for the circumference of a circle, the formula is just 2 pi r. But when you take a fraction of the circle, the length of that arc would just be a fraction of the actual circumference. And that's also theta over 2 pi. Now, as you can see in the first one, pi cancels pi. You're left with theta r squared over 2. And in the second one, 2 pi cancels 2 pi. You're left with theta r. So that's where the formula came from. But you may as well just remember it now, because you are now doing A levels. So given this, we can say therefore that 9 equals half theta r squared. And from the second one, we can say that 15 equals theta r. We just want to have one equation now involving r. So the best thing to do is make theta the subject of the formula in the first one and throw it into the second equation, okay? So the first one now tells me that theta is 18 over r squared. So if I throw in this, uh, this substitution of theta into the second equation, this would mean that 15 equals, wherever I see theta, I write 18 over r squared times r. Now let us um, cross multiply. Okay, so if I multiply both sides by r squared, there's a mistake somewhere, no one reminded me. 15 is not theta r, 15 is not the length of the arc. 15 is supposed to be the perimeter of the shape. And of course, in this case, the perimeter would be the length of that arc plus the radius on this side and the radius on the other side. So we actually have 2r. So this is theta plus 2r. Okay. So 15 is all that plus 2r. Okay, so I was going to make a mistake, but it's good that I found out because I know what I'm trying to achieve anyway. So we can multiply both sides by r squared, and when we do that, it becomes 15r squared on this side. When you multiply this by r squared, you're left with the 18r. And when you multiply that by r squared, you're left with... Um, 2r cube, and we can now just divide everything by r. So this is just 15r, and this is just 18, and that is just 2r squared. Of course, if you rearrange it, you can bring the 15 to the other side, the 15r to the other side, and it's left, you're left with 0 on this side. 2r squared minus 15r plus 18 as required. So that's it. That's question five A.
We move to question 5b, which says, now find the value of theta. So question 5b is building on what we have just done in question 5a. Of course, if you're going to solve for theta, which we have already called theta equals 18 over r squared, it means you need to know what r is. So going back to the formula we were told to prove, which was 2r squared, minus 15r plus 18 equals 0. Can we solve for r? Yes, let's solve for r. So we need to factorize this. And again, I'm going to use the method I told you about. To factorize this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to pretend, using a pencil, I'm going to pretend that my 2r is in both places. I know we can't have 2r in both places, but I'm going to pretend it's in both places. And then later, when I find out what can be factorized, then I would know what to do. So again, if you look at that, and that, and that, that's your mam, M-A-M. We want to be able to get two numbers that multiply to give whatever the two guys on the end multiply to give. And they should add up to give whatever the guy in the middle gives. So I need two numbers. The multiplies to give what's 18 2 times 18 36 and they should add up to give what is that negative 15 what two numbers come to your mind I can think of 12 and 3 but that's going to be negative 12 negative 3 so we know the numbers we're looking for is negative 12 so that's going to be negative 12 and that's going to be negative 3 which of these two can be factorized we can factorize this, no? Okay. Can we factorize that? Yes. What goes out? Two. Remember I said to you that whatever goes out never comes back in this peculiar trick. So if the two is going to go out, you're going to be left with R minus six. And that is the actual factor. So it's going to be just R minus six. The two has gone out and it's not coming back. And then you have two R minus three equals zero. Good, so if this is what we have, when we um, solve for r, we can see therefore that r is either 6 or r is 1.5. Now we have two values for r, we should be able to solve for theta now. Therefore, theta is 18 over 6 squared or 18 over 1.5 squared. Now, using our calculator, we can do this. So, 18 divided by 6 squared, that is 0 0.5. And it's in red, by the way. And in the other case, 18 divided by 1.5 squared, and that is 8. So, 8. Now, as you can see, the question says, find the value. It did not say find the values. So we should have only one answer. Why do we have two? And here it says, explain why it is only possible to have one value. Okay. Well, if theta could be 0.5 or 8 rad, which of them does not make sense? As you can see in the sector shown, Theta is not even up to 2 pi. It's just a fraction of a circle. Theta can never be greater than 2 pi. And so, is 8 pi greater than 2 pi? Let's see. 2 pi is just there on the calculator, right? So, that's 6 point something, 6.28. And 8 rad is just so greater than 2 pi. So, theta is 0 0.5 rad because 8 rad is greater than 2 pi, which is not appropriate. So it's, it's not an appropriate answer to say 8 rad, because that's greater than 2 pi. Okay, let's look at question 6. Sam goes on a diet. He assumes that his mass M after T days decreases at a rate that is inversely proportional to the Q 
cube root of its mass. Construct a differential equation involving mt and positive constant k to model the situation. Well, we've been told that Sam goes on a diet. We expect his mass to reduce with time. But of course, you can only reduce your mass to some extent. You cannot, you cannot disappear or go into extinction by losing mass. So mass should never go down to zero, right? He assumes that his mass m after t days, so m would be what decreases at a rate. Okay, so we're talking about the rate now, not the actual mass. So the rate of this mass. And because it decreases, it has to be negative at a rate that is inversely proportional. So because it's inversely proportional, I'm just going to put a k first, which is just a factor, a coefficient of the proportionality. Now let's talk about what it's proportional to, or what it's inversely proportional to, to the cube root of its mass. So if it had been directly proportional, I'm going to have the mass here with a 3 on it, cube root. But it's not directly proportional, it's inversely proportional. So that should go underneath like that. I should put a stroke there. But rather than put a stroke there, I would just be kind enough to put a minus sign, which tells you that it's actually k over m cube with a minus there. All right, so construct a differential equation involving m t and the constant k. We have just done that. You get 3 marks because of the fact that you've put m cubed, because you've put a negative, and because you've put the dm dt instead of m. Explain why Sam's assumption may not be appropriate. Well, this is quite um, obvious. Why do you think his assumption may not be appropriate? For just one mark, I think you can make up anything and still be correct. So he's going on a diet, and he assumes, that's his assumption, right? He assumes that his mass after t days decreases at a rate that is inversely proportional to the cube root of his mass. <coughs> so why is this not appropriate? Because with this sort of thing, it shows that his mass would continue to go down till it goes to zero and when his mass is zero dm dt would be infinity which is not appropriate i mean that's okay so if mass goes so low perhaps to zero you have k over zero cube which is infinity does that mean that dm dt becomes infinite no so that's not possible it's not appropriate so that's it Right, next question is question 7, which we shall continue after in the next video. Just stay tuned, okay?